Halloween if you celebrate the pagan holiday honoring the end of the harvest. Or maybe you celebrate the Day of the Dead if you have Mexican heritage. At my house, we celebrate the traditional American folk holiday of Halloween. And let me tell you, I have loved Halloween since I was a kid. And that's for one reason and one reason only. Candy. My sweet tooth is legendary. And I will confess, there have been years of my life where I think I pretty much lived off nothing but candy. Thankfully, I've gotten better at eating my vegetables as I've gotten older, but there still isn't much I wouldn't do for a bag of chocolate-covered gummy bears or a spree, you know, that hard candy, or a few pieces of strawberry Twizzler. Mm. Anyway, when I was a kid growing up in northern Illinois, Halloween night was sometimes so cold, my brother and my cousins and I had to wear winter jackets over our costumes. Our parents would drive us door to door because it was too cold to walk, and we could hardly wait until they came to a full stop before we all piled out of the car and ran up to the house and pressed the doorbell. Half the time, for all that effort, you'd get one piece of candy you knew you would never eat. A Tootsie Roll or a Circus Peanut or a Chicka Stick. Something only your dad would eat. It hardly seemed worth it at all. But then you'd hit that one house. That one house that gave out full Hershey bars or box of nerds or better yet, held out the bowl and let you pick out your own candy. That made it all worth it. In fact, the joy I felt at those rare houses with the really good candy was probably increased because of all the effort and persistence I put into getting there. Fighting the cold and the cousins and a stiff costume covered by a winter jacket, knocking on door after door. I am inspired by this memory of relentless persistence when I think back to that girl who was willing to go to any lengths to get some candy. I keep hearing the Itsy Bitsy Spider song in my head. You know how it goes. I don't have to sing it. The Itsy Bitsy Spider went up the spout again. You can sing that song over and over and that spider just keeps going back up that water spout no matter how many times it gets knocked down. This was me, going after that perfect candy. And my cousins, who were all bigger and older than me, would sometimes literally knock me out of the way. But I was focused. I was not giving up. More than the candy, I think I was after joy. The experience of joy that I felt when I knew one of my neighbors was waiting for me to give me a treat. And all I had to do was ask, and not just one neighbor, but every neighbor on the block, sitting there with their doors closed and buckets of treats on their lap, just waiting for me. And when they opened the door, we would both be excited. Sometimes I didn't even see what candy they put in my basket. I ran to the next house and the next. It didn't even matter what candy. Because I don't remember eating the candy. Years and years of Halloween candy eating and the joy of eating the candy has disappeared. What remains is that memory of the joy of persistence, of the pursuit, the joy of engaging in that moment with my neighbors and my family, the joy of possibility in my basket, and the promise of the treat. I wonder if there is a treat that you're going after these days. Something that brings you joy. Something you have to fight or work a little bit to get, but feels totally worth it. And are you worried about what kind it is, whether it's exactly right, or are you focused on the experience, the joy in the pursuit and in the possibility? Or maybe you've got treats to spare and your joy comes from giving it away over and over again, no matter who comes to your door. 
Last year, I spent some time with my son giving away candy in front of our church to trick-or-treaters, and we both agreed. There is joy on both sides of that exchange. And in fact, when we ran out of candy, my son grabbed his basket, which he'd spent the evening filling up at other places in the neighborhood, and shared what he had collected. So he got to experience both sides of that joy, the pursuit, the capture, and the release. It was a beautiful Halloween, and he never actually ate any candy. Ha! Though to be fair, he obviously does not like candy as much as I do. For this Halloween, I hope that you will engage in some persistent, insistent joy, whether you are giving or receiving or both. May we all remember, no matter how much some of us love candy, that in the end, it's not about the candy at all, but that moment when we meet one another after much persistence on the threshold of joy and smile and share.